Hello and welcome to Groundworks. Today we are showing off KSP 1.1. And without further ado, let me introduce you to some of the new cool stuff that has been added. Uh, as you know, KSP 1.1 is a big, big update moving from Unity 4 to Unity 5 along with some massive improvements and a lot of things had to be redone from scratch. And the settings screen is one of the major updates that have been added, <coughs> or not added, but overhauled, because uh, some of the settings have been added, some of the things have been corrected, and I just wanted to show the new mm, settings UI. It looks really cool, and I really appreciate all the extra settings that have been added. Also, like, I guess, Trek IR and six degrees of freedom, etc., etc. So, <clears throat> without further ado, KSP 1.1 is also very uh, user-friendly towards new users, as a lot of the tool tips have been added, and uh, the more older verb players will immediately notice uh, seven new icons, which I'm showing off just now. Uh, displaying the information about various uh, KSP facilities that are geared to give you some idea of what each facility is being used for. So, <clears throat> without further ado, let me also show one of the other new features. Uh, so, once you go into the VA Beam, just showing off a little bit how it looks like. Mm, in some of the UI. Engineer's report has been here since I think 105, but the new feature is the KSpedia. And uh, this is something that has been lacking before, um, and it contains a wealth of information in terms of how to play the game, explaining, as you can see, the UI, the nav ball, what it is, how does it behave, and all of this information was previously you need to go to Reddit or YouTube and watch people, you know, either play and try and understand how does it work. Well, now all of this information is stored in the KSpedia. So I'm just showing off various screens of the flight interface, which very nicely describe how it works and what are each icons for, etc. Also, you have information about the orbital mechanics, what is the orbit, nodes, apoapsis, periapsis, and how to maneuver around that. Mm, and also, uh, this manual is... Um, previously, lots of information was on the Reddit. Now, at least you can browse and th see things in-game. And I'm pretty sure the console players will appreciate that. You have some information on celestial bodies. Not too much information, but also I would like to point some older players to check it out as well, because... For example, I've been playing 090, and here you can have a lot of information about heat mechanics, which is something that I haven't encountered a great deal. And I'm pretty sure I would be very happy to actually review this in detail. So, as you can see, it has been overhauled in terms of the UI. The navball is a bit bigger. The SAS and RCS icon are kind of following nicely along the lines. The orbit lines have been slightly tweaked. And also, uh, one of the really cool features that I would like to highlight above all, I like very much the, in the resources the stage view, so you can view it stage by stage. I don't know if that's like... Mm, specifically to 1.1, but one feature that is specific to 1.1 is the context screens. If you can see Mark 1 command pod, I can drag it around and I can pin it, which means the more stuff I open, I can actually have more screens, which gives me better, finer controls over what I want to do and more information that I want to have. Uh, and also I can toggle and enable and disable each of them individually. And um, previously, you, if you wanted to do something like automatically, you would need to have action groups. So, um, also, given the move from Unity 4 to Unity 5, there have been lots of optimizations and also some massive boost of performance. And I have decided just to basically show you a little bit. I have experienced that on my machine, uh, I have two computers, 
this has been recorded on my desktop so which is usually which is kind of a beefy machine it's basically an i7 uh with the gtx uh, 780 and 16 gig of ram core i7 cpu so and it runs butter smooth at uh this ran at 60 fps because i had enabled the v-sync but when i disable it i could get it up to 120 180 depending on what i've been showing so really really big improvement over the previous one previous one ran at like 50 to 60 uh, so this is like um uh, because the physics has been kind of moved more in terms of gpu and also most of the calculations have been until now only single threaded cpu based and i guess the ui has uh, also been modified so uh, to test a little bit the performance i decided to record exactly the same ship launch in 105 and 1.1 so the fps roughly at this takeoff in 1.1 i had around 70 fps and in 105 i had around 45 50 uh, and that was before the physics for the aerodynamic forces started kicking in so roughly now you will see around 10,000 meters or yeah around 10 kilometers when the aerodynamic high pressure forces start to kick in or sorry already at around 5,000 the FPS <clears throat> on the 105 would typically drop to I would say 20 ish while on the 1.1 I was able to maintain a steady 42 FPS which is something that I can tell you I, it's very much appreciated because um, given this is stock and as you have seen my some of my playthroughs I run with the metric crap ton of mods um, this particular craft would boil down to maybe four or five FPS with all the mods. So I cannot really wait to see how much will 1.1 improve. But I can tell you, I play on two computers. Currently, um, I'm on holidays in France for three months and I'm playing on, my, on six years old Mac. And even that one, which doesn't benefit much from the boost in performance, has shown 10 to 15 percent boost and here we are talking six year old computer with core i7 four gigs of ram and amd radeon 6750m so basically 2010 mac but running windows 7. Uh, also you can see on 1.1 a little bit improved um, uh, like uh, orbital lines uh, I very much appreciate that and uh, one of the best things the click through it's uh, has been a nightmare until 105 for example if you wanted to set up a maneuver node just finding a spot where you could do that that was tedious as hell this has been corrected with a new UI and now setting up maneuver node is really easy and I cannot tell you how much this actually means in terms of gameplay and also for if you would like to record stuff and stuff then you, you really don't want to be like spending half of your time trying to find where to place a maneuver node. So that has been fixed and for example FPS wise both of this uh, in 105 I had roughly uh, here I had la like 38 FPS in 1.1 I had 120 roughly. So, a massive improvement. Um, if you ask me, like, what would be <laughs> the um, overall difference, I would say from 10 on the lower end computers up to 200%, you could see improvements depending on your craft size, your mod list, and everything. But a, really, a big, big kudos to the devs for actually making it so. Um, like I commented a little bit, navball is slightly larger. I would imagine that this comes uh, because of the because of the console player, so they can show, actually read the numbers and all that. But you can actually sc scale it down, which is uh, which has been seen in the settings, and I really appreciate that, and um, it looks really cool. So 
Um, as you can see, they are kind of running side by side. I try to keep them as accurate as possible, but yeah. So lighting, it's really nice. Uh, and um, here we can see, I almost was able to perfectly align and detach at the same times, but you have to take care into account that this is two separate recordings entirely. So yeah. Okay. Anyway, so apart from that, one of the major overhauls has been also the wheels physics. And uh, since the devs were using physics uh, from some previous components, they just wouldn't work with um, 1.1, so it had to be redone from scratch. And um, you will probably have seen in the dev note posts uh, how much more th work had to go into the simulation of the wheels, like shocks, uh, pressures, also rotation forces, skidding and all that. And um, it looks really great and it provides some interesting airtime if you're kind of playing. So as you can see, a little bit skidding, sliding and all that jazz. I really think the 1.1 will bring a major boost in terms of rovers and stuff being done with them because it's just so darn cool. And if you look at the contextual menus, you can see you can also enable, disable all the motors. You could do that previously, but I really appreciate additional information that has been added to the context screens. So to show off one final kind of feature that I found. I don't know if it's a bug or a feature. It's up to devs to, I guess, find out. Uh, if you do some air times, the tires have seen to be made out of titanium. Here you see me bumping into the tank and it completely blew, but my tires are still inflated. Big kudos for that. So I don't know if the Kevlar tires have been intentional or a bug, but for example I appreciated that my rover completely disassembled but the tires were still inflated. <laughs> well that's at least a little bit of fun. Anyway guys thank you very much for watching and see you in the next episode.